All right, hello. Um, my name is Adam Kagan, and this is my uh, sketchbook uh, presentation, or my you know flip through for this uh, what if trailer. Um, looking back on my posts on the blogs and also in my trailer, um, I realized I don't really cover a lot of stuff about you know the technology, math, or science portion, or uh, science and engineering portion of the themas course. So I was just going to show, well, before I get into my actual sketchbook, I was just going to show you guys some of my, um, you know, the, the ways that I came up with my concept and um, project. So, um, so yeah, so this is uh, just like a brief, uh, you know, sheet that I'd made um, explaining what's the, you know, the big question for the trailer that I'm trying to, con or that I'm trying to, you know, ask and make people think about. Um, so the question, it, the biggest question I had, I feel like, you know, from the, from being in this pandemic and, you know, we live in a very existential time period, you know, social, it, social issues feel very re real right now. Um, and it's always in our face. So, you know, I, I find myself and I'm sure a lot of people out there, you know, in our, in our class, but also just in the world in general, we always question like, what is the state of humanity right now? Um, so that's kind of my inspiration um, that came from this whole trailer. Um, so the biggest question that I had, you know, since we live in this kind of apocalyptic world right now, um, is what if humanity dies out? So how, first of all, how would we die out? Um, of course, well, right, as of right now in the tw in 2020, you know, we feel that, you know, viral infections and, um, pan and the pandemic is probably going to wipe us out, right? Or at least it feels that way. Um, but for my world specifically, I wanted to talk about, you know, nuclear war. Originally, I want to talk about nuclear wars, uh, and, and environmental destruction. Um, I'm very inspired. You know, I'm, I'm, I mean, I don't really want to, you know, talk about myself a little bit too much because it, you know, it might be a little bit unrelated to this video, but, um, I am half Japanese and growing up with a Japanese mother and having family in Japan, there's always this emphasis on, you know, war being a terrible thing and, um, you know, seeing the aftermath of, nu of uh, you know, the nuclear bombs in Fukushima, uh, not Fuku well, yeah, Fukushima on one hand in, it's not a bomb, but, you know, um, the, nu the nuclear natural disasters that happened in uh, March 11th of 2011 um, along with, you know, here, World War, the World War II events and, uh, Hiroshima and Nagasaki really questions, you know, um, kind of wraps up my identity and my view towards, you know, nuclear weapons, nuclear technology, um, and war in general. So that's kind of what I wanted to, you know, cover in my trailer. Um, so, you know, this bubble, as this bubble explains, um, we should think about how, uh, how our actions, we should think about our actions and our obligations as uh, beings of this planet. Um, so, or more, more of what do we leave behind with, you know, all this state of chaos that we live in right now? Um, you know, the toxicity from our uh, activities and the environment, you know, which leads to destruction, um, which then leaves no, no or very room for the life after us. Or, you know, the, I'm thinking more about like, the life after humanity per se because the way we things that we're going right now um you know we're probably going to be extinct at some point a lot of scientists out there say that we're currently in our sixth wave of extinction right now uh, which is caused by human activity so i just want to emphasize that you know this idea that they're the way things are going right now or you know the way things uh went for my current my world for my project there's no slash very little room for any form of life in general um so that being said i also wanted to combine my design into my project um so uh excuse me for my you know my uh use of language in my notes but um my in my design to have these very grotesque images and it you know questions the type of media that we consume um, and I'll get into that a little bit uh, more in detail later in this video. Um, so, with this message from my zine and 
you know, my question about our demise and destruction, the final equation would, you know, final question arises, what if humanity dies out and the only remains that le that are left on Earth is our dark depictions of life or my, z my zine? So, yeah, that's, uh, you know, the big premise of my what if trailer and how I came up with this uh, concept. Uh, moving on. So I wanted to talk, go over a little bit about the technology of the apocalypse, technology engineering. Um, and then on the back, there's some math and science on there. Um, so in terms of the technology, um, I wanted to create an environment um, where radiation, you know, just basically just abrupts the entire landscape. Um, so uh, the main premise here, so the war world after us, you know, um, only those that can dig underground or, you know, escape the radioactive atmosphere can survive. So, you know, and also those that benefit from mutations can survive. Um, the benefit, you know, um, benefiting positively in terms of evolution from ra something like radiation is very small. Um, a lot of, you know, if you look at events in Chernobyl um, or you know, or in the, again, in the world wars, um, a lot of, m many of these people just, you know, ended up, even the survivors of the, the attacks in general, they ended up dying from cancers, um, and other sicknesses related to radiation. And they all, you know, people also get mutate genetic mutations and it's passed down from generation to generation. It's not really like an evolutionary, like, um, what's the word? Like, it's not, it's not good at all it just ends up killing people um and to this day people still suffer with you know the this uh, aftermath of you know both the wars and the you know these uh disasters that happen um so thinking about those those aspects you know only a few organisms would survive which is which is main, main the main reason why i only in the video i depict only one creature instead of like a whole colony of monsters um so yeah, so we flip back up here. Um, so from this radiation, um, I wanted to bring up, bring an idea that the monster has a brain and it can stand, it can walk around. So it has four legs um, and it has arms. So it's able to use or create tools from the rugged, you know, aftermath that we left behind. So for that reason, um, in the video, the monster has a very rusty pickaxe. Um, originally, I was thinking about, um, I mean, yeah, this is, I, I ended up using a pickaxe, but I also wanted some to create like some form of like a jackhammer that will allow the creature to dig really fast, really quickly. Um, but thinking about like, you know, the, you know, the aspect of the world and the elements that I'm presenting it, um, I don't know if I, I didn't know if I want this creature to be that technologically advanced because I'm trying to emphasize that this cre this creature's you know the way that it survives it just look looks around its own environment and then adapts from it so um so yeah the initial idea so yeah this says probably isn't advanced enough to you know to make a jackhammer so i just you know ended up going with the pickaxe um originally i wanted to do something like if you if you ever played a video game called fallout in vegas there's a what there's a you know melee weapon um, called a rebar club, or, or it's just a, a big cement block or a piece of rock on a re on a you know thing a rebar. So I wanted to do that originally, um, but you know in the process of animation, um, you know on Blender and stuff, I wasn't really able to figure out like how to combine like a rock mesh to a you know piece of rebar. Um, but looking back on it now, I could probably do it and you know edit that tool. For you know, for the future, if I if I decide to uh, tweak up the trailer, so that's that's kind of what I'm gonna do for the future. Um, and again, you know, this just the sides of the blades so that the it could dig and you know take stuff out of the ground. Um, yeah. Um, so that's kind of like the technology that my agent uses. Um, on the bottom here, I have a diagram of a nuclear bomb. Um, could because originally I did want. Um, to emphasize, you know, um, how the, how humanity got destroyed specifically by a nuclear war. Um, 
but you know i couldn't I, in the video i don't think it really showed that i just didn't really i was trying to animate i, I mean explain it in my blogs but I, I was trying to animate like a mushroom cloud um but I didn't really understand how to use the um, particle system in Blender, and also my computer couldn't really handle animating the simulation of you know the smoke rising up and stuff. So I just kind of opted to depicting a toxic environment or uh, in the building. If you guys see, you know in the very beginning of my trailer, um, but here um i just briefly sketched out a very simple diagram of how a nuclear bomb is made um so i don't know if you guys could see i mean yeah sorry for my crude handwriting and really disgusting sketching but um in a nuclear warhead um there's many parts to it you know um so you got the explosive co explosive lens that surrounds the uranium, which, surround, which surrounds a vacuum, which sur surrounds a tritanium gas, which all, which then surrounds, you know, plutonium or uranium. Um, and then there's a, the spark plug that's made of plutonium, the lithium core that encases the pl plutonium, and then, you know, uh, and then again, uranium that encases all, all this stuff. And then there's a metallic, metallic or, you know, just some random, some case, some form of casing uh, for the bomb. Um, and here I just stapled a very, um, you know, an explanation from Wikipedia about how a bomb actually explodes. So, so here it says a warhead before firing primary at the top, uh, first, you know, first at the top, you know, and so it goes from A all the way to E. Um, so yeah, so I'll leave a link in the, just in the, um, description for the blog, if you guys want to, you know, read about this more in depth it's very interesting um how they like figured out how to you know create this weapon um you know not in a human humane way or moral standpoint but just from you know like the science and engineering aspect of everything so yeah so I, that's why i just you know stapled that in there um and just drew that out and uh yeah and then going further on talking about you know radiation um so i kind of just combined science and math in this so um so there's this concept about a half-life right or like a oh but before i go into this i'm not a science major so forgive me if i'm wrong about some stuff about this um but i just picked out some of these elements and i thought it'd be useful to use them or represent them in my world so that's kind of why they're there um, but anyway, so from my understanding of a half-life, um, a half-life measures a rate of decay of an element, right? So in this case, um, since we're talking about a nuclear bomb, um, I wanted to talk, I wanted to explore how radiation decays or how long it takes for a radioactive material to decay over over a period of time. And this is the diagram that portrays how now, you know, that measures how long it would take for um, an element to decay. So um, N of T, it explains how much substance, how much, you know, the quantity of uh, the element remains. N of zero is the initial quantity. Um, time, T is time. And then T to uh, the one half is half the half-life of the substance. So... Yeah, so through this equation, you get this diagram right here. So um, the y-axis explains the remaining number of, you know, the elements. And then the x-axis is the number of half-lives it takes um, for the, you know, the over time. So one half-life is 5.27 uh, years. Um, so there we go. All right. Um, so here, it, this is just a little, you know, rundown of like how, long, what kind of, you know, uh, elements or how long it would take for a certain element or how much half-life an element has. Um, so I just circled hydrogen and uranium here just because, um, you know, they're, well, uranium, well, I don't really know why you put hydrogen there. I just, you know, um, the name hydrogen bomb and just assume, initially I assumed 
Um, they used hydrogen in these nuclear weapons, um, but clearly they, their big uh, element is uranium and plutonium. Um, so this number doesn't really matter. But um, an element of uranium, it takes 4.5 billion years to, to decay. Um, so considering that uranium is a very radioactive element, um, if we have a nuclear war, we'll be, we'll, not only will we kill off humanity, but we'll kill off all life on this earth. Um, yeah, so that's just kind of, you know, a quick rundown of the technology, engineering, math, and science portion of my world, and all in this, uh, this one sheet. So, yeah. Okay, moving on. So, this, this is just a sketch of my creature. Um, like I, like I said, and, you know, when I was explaining the, before, when I explained my question and stuff, um, I wanted to have a brain, a, a big brain, some kind of mouth, antennas, bug eyes, um, uh, because my original intent for this creature was that it, it was like a mutated cockroach or a mutated, because, you know, cockroaches are known to be able to survive anything, including a nuclear disaster. So I thought it'd be interesting to try to, you know, put elements of, of a cockroach that in our, you know, natural world into my zine, I mean, not my zine, but my, uh, my trailer for my zine. So, yeah, so this is the front view, the very veiny, it has horns on the sides, and then if you look out on the side view, again, it has arms. Originally, I wanted it to have six legs, um, but during, when I was animating, um, I figured that it would be easier to animate uh, four instead of three. On a four instead of six. So, um, so yeah, so that's kind of that. And on the back is just, you know, this is just like my lettering exercises. Um, yeah. Um, so yeah, so in the context of like the environment of my trailer, um, because, you know, the, I'm, ta I'm talking about, you know, I'm questioning aspects of toxicity and radiation. Um, I ended up just creating a, you know, a desert environment, well, not, yeah, desert environment or like a wasteland. You know, I wanted to implement elements of like a, that would indicate it's a wasteland. Um, but yeah, and uh, now we'll move on to the, the other big component of my trailer, which is this thing right here. This is the physical copy of my zine, The Book of Etard. Um, this is a personal project that I've been creating for throughout this entire quarter. And, this, you know, it's a very important to me, but it's also very important to my trailer. Um, because the purpose of my trailer was to kind of, you know, be a new way to um, show people my the type of art that I like to do. Um, and yeah, so this is this is a very important, you know, piece or very important um prototype i should say of um of you know that came out of my my uh, project so you know this is the front cover and you flip it open um there's an in inside cover which explains what the term etar means um and then that's my name and my instagram account handle um a short comic right that warns people about the contents of the zine and then the comic inside, pretty self-explanatory. And then, you know, just like these images, this is the image board that I made. Um, and yeah, and some of these images are used in the trailer. Um, so yeah, so that's kind of that. Um, so I guess I'll just go chronologically in terms of like how I came up with the zine or in what, you know, in correlation to the, um, the trailer. So this is a, a layout of, you know, how I want it, like, just like the design of the, the zine itself. Um, I felt like this is very important for my entire project because, you know, it kind of shaped up how, I, what elements I wanted to use in my trailer. So, um, yeah, it just explains like what the cover might look like, what the inside cover might look like. Um, you know, I just want to 
originally I wanted to make this like a real published book with like mate with like a lot of pages, you know, a table of continents and then a whole manifesto of an explanation about stuff. Um, but you know, it just ended up being an eight, eight page paper, eight page, um, pamphlet that I could print at home. So yeah, so that's kind of that. And there's nothing on the back there. Um, yeah, excuse me. So this is the, the real, um, a thing that I drew. Um, so what I usually do for my artwork and in, in general is I draw, go over it with a micron pen or some form of ink, and then I scan it and then edit it through Photoshop. So yeah, so I scan this out, um, you know, sets the overall tone of the, um, the zine that I want to want to go over. And then this is like a test print. Um, I printed it out in, in this neon pink paper because this was the color that I originally wanted to go with um, before I found, you know, this, this, uh, this uh, green paper or yellowish green paper, which I think, I think this looks a lot better than on this. Um, and again, you know, originally it was just going to be like a simple background, not much, you know, if you compare these two side by side, you know, there's a very big difference in terms of like the layout and like the, the, you know, the, of course, titling, um, and yeah, that sort of stuff. So, so there's that. Um, here's how this is, a. Uh, you know, this was original my uh, concept for like a back design, which which then turned into a uh, a comic strip, uh, which I'm looking for right now. Oh, there it is. So yeah, so this came out of this. Um, so I just wanted for the back cover, just like one image that just has these, but then I just kind of just drew a bunch of different designs and then realized like, oh, I could, I could just make this into a comic and that might be a better, uh, present way to present stuff. Um, you know, just a random reminder to email the professor, email my address to a professor. Um, yeah. Yeah, originally I was going to draw a pig, um, but I thought, you know, my character, my, uh, character would be a lot better for the, uh, the comic. And this is the layout of the, of the comic strip. Yeah, originally I was going to, I was thinking about the, I thought it'd be funny if the book said, call me daddy as it was choking this guy, um. But yeah, I ended up not doing that. There isn't really a reason why I didn't do it. I could, probably could do it if I was to, if I decided to reprint, move, print another issue out. There's nothing behind there. And then I ran a room, and I didn't like how I sketched out the bottom panel, so I just ended up just you know doing a lettering, and then you know drew this on a different piece of paper, and uh, yeah, so that's the. A little comp, my first comic strip, and then my, that's my uh, cover. Um, this is uh, the first post that I made on the blog. Um, I just kind of threw this in the blog just to see if I could post anything like this. And, you know, I, I feel like I got pretty okay uh, responses. So, um, so yeah. So that's that. It's just just the dude pointing a gun at another dude who ripped off his own face. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. And the caption reads, "Rip off your face." Um, my it's kind of is this it's kind of funny story. Um, I showed my dad this picture when he walked into my room, and this was on my wall. Oh, that's another thing. All a lot of these. Uh, these uh, sketches, the reason why they aren't in a book is because I usually just rip them out and put, put it on my wall so I can look at it and think about it. Um, but anyway, so my, when my dad walked in my room and you saw this, he asked me, why is, why is there a gun pointing at this dude? 
and I, you know, I just asked him, wouldn't you want a gun if a guy came at you with, you know, with his face ripped off and he has a knife? So, you know, that's just kind of like, kind of that, the story behind that. Um, furthermore, uh, these are just like notes for my developing my zine. Um, so this was like the title that I wanted to go with. And then, yeah, just like this, just like elements that I wanted to use. This is for um, uh, the mind board that I showed you guys in the book, which I'll also show in the physical copy. Um, your mind, your phone is a cigarette. I want to talk about, I was, I was thinking about making a, this, this never came into existence, but. I wanted to talk about how, like, we're always on our phone. It's like a cigarette, you know? Um, yeah. So this is just, like, a, my notes kind of talking about that. And then this is, like, the elements that went into my mind board. Um, so this is the mini sign stuff, which I'll pull out right now. If I can find it very quickly. Oh. So yeah, so this is the prototype mini design that I made out of my mind board. Um, this, this just kind of talks about that. So I wanted like one cohesive message that goes out throughout the, the this little booklet. So these are the deep dark fantasies we see daily. And this is where I got the, you know, the design for the backside of this. So yeah, I'm, when I first made it, I thought I would make a separate design for the real, the big one, but actually kind of, I, I figured I'd like the, you know, the message that it speaks. So, and the, you know, the intended use for the zine. So I thought that was kind of funny. So I just kind of threw it on here. Um, so there's that. Um, let's see. Yeah, just another page for notes for the zine. And then a bunch of lettering stuff. Yeah, I don't have the best handwriting. So I'm sorry if you guys can't read what I show. Um, but I'm a very, I feel like I... I'm a, I'm very visual, so um, I rely. I feel like my images speak better than like my words written out. Um, but anyway, moving on. Uh, this is Michael Myers, kind of like a fan thing. Fan. This is I made this during Halloween. I thought it was kind of like a fun project to do on the side. Um, this this image didn't go into the zine, you know, because I was kind of scared of like copyright if I decided to sell my zine. Um, but Michael Myers isn't really, you know, important in this one, but the background for this is more important because, um, uh, wait, let me just pull, yeah. Sorry about that. So the background for this, I used in this design, which I which is a design for a sticker. I, I like making stickers. You know, that's also another side thing I do. Um, you know, just a hobby. But this image was in the trailer. So this background, right, plus this, you know, makes that image. And let me look for the, the big one. Yeah, there we go which is this. Um, this is on an 11 inch by 15 inch uh, watercolor paper. And it's done using uh, an ink brush, a micron pen, and a real brush. So yeah, so I just combined this, I just took a picture of this, processed it through Photoshop, edited out the color pencil, and then Put this backdrop on it, and then this came out. And yeah, now and now I can make uh, print stickers 
also did the same thing with the um the cover of my zine and then these are just some designs and this is the original design for the michael myers but i don't think i'm gonna print this anymore because uh, i don't i don't want to get a dmca'd so well that's well dmca is a copyright thing for music but I, but either way i don't want to get copywritten and uh but anyway um this is a drawing that didn't make it into the zine that i made it's a dude getting his head bashed in by a dude with a guy with a ski mask um yeah i ended up not finishing this because i just don't know what to do with the background um but this is still a work in progress so so yeah so there's that um so again going back to the michael myers this was the initial design for michael the michael myers sticker you know it just says michael myers um and then i made this little poster thing and it's just on a you know piece of cardboard so this actually sits in my room just and i look at it every day because I, I don't know i like it it's kind of cool kind of spooky yeah, this makes for good like gifts for people on their birthday. If their birthday is on like, I had a, I have a friend whose birthday is on Halloween, so I made him one of these and then just gave it to him. And uh, yeah, so that's that. Um, and these are my image boards that go into that you could uh, that has edited it into this the middle page for my zine. Um, let me just yeah. And, uh, yeah, so these are my images that I came up with. Um, for the, for these image boards, I just pulled out a piece of paper, divided it into nine sections, and then just randomly sketched out drawings, and then went over them with ink. Um, yeah, I, I do realize sexual asphyxiation is misspelled completely, so I apologize. English isn't my first language. Um... Uh, <laughs> Although I speak it fluently and I, you know, I go to college, I college at an American university, you know, my spelling is just fucking terrible. Um, but yeah, this is a, yeah, this was originally going to go on the second sheet, but I didn't really like the way it turned out. So, you know, just ended up just staying there. Um, and there's this one. So, yeah. Um, and then, so I took these images and then put them in these, in these uh, TV monitors and made this. I wanted to make it look like it was in like a surveillance room. Like, you know, when you, when, uh, when you, in movies or whatever, right. When they go in, when they have a scene about like a guy doing surveillance, he al he's always surrounded by mon these monitors. So that's kind of what I did there 